How are you doing, folks? It's Joe Ditzel. Hey, I went on an early morning bike ride, and I wanted to share with you some of the amazing, the wild, fun facts I learned about Columbus, Ohio in my short stay here in town. I think you're going to enjoy this. Here we go. High Street used to be called Rum Alley because it was a major pipeline in the illegal rum trade of the 1870s. Bootleggers used to run illegal barrels of rum from Cincinnati all the way up to Cleveland. And these buildings here were speakeasies along the way, many of them with false basements so that they could store the rum as it made as it made as it made its way north to Cleveland. Now this construction site here is just off of High Street in the short north area. This is going to be President Donald Trump's Midwestern White House. The whole first floor will be a replica of one of his casinos. There, there, uh, there were some rumors that his wife was gonna stay at the Midwestern White House right here in Columbus. But when they asked her how she felt about that, she said she didn't know where Ohio was. So now we're in the short north area. And uh, as we get into downtown, I'll explain the reason for that name. Columbus used to be called the Arch City based on the the nickname came from these arches that you see going across High Street. They were originally built in the early 1900s then they were destroyed uh, the reason being that the original ones were made out of wood and the city thought they were a fire hazard. But with the uh, rebirth of the city and an effort to capture some of the character that the town has developed over the years, they reestablished these arches in uh, the late 1900s. Originally, they were decorative, as I mentioned. They were also used by the citizens to hang their laundry. Every other, uh, every third arch was used for dry cleaning, but most of them, most of the arches just were used for uh, normal, normal non-dry cleaning laundry. This is the uh, Buckeye Natural History Museum which houses the largest collection of buckeyes of all sizes from around the state and country and parts of the world. This is one of the world's first indoor aerial bowling alleys. It's a single lane allowing bowlers to enjoy their sport in the middle of winter. This is the uh, steepest hill in Ohio right here. I've got a uh, bike speedometer here. We'll be able to see how fast we can get going. But this incline right here is the uh, steepest incline in the state. You're talking about a major degrees of incline. Right now I'm going, without any pedaling, going 12 miles per hour. Amazing. This is the uh, this street is the site of the annual soapbox derby, which gets competitors from around the world. I'm up to 13 miles per hour, so you can see why there's many exciting races on that section of downtown. Woo! Speaking of Soapbox Derby, 
This is the transmission from a soapbox derby car of a young boy from the 1940s who showed up at the line with a three-story car that, believe it or not, did not break the rules at the time. What the judges and the audience didn't know was that he had this transmission in the bottom story of his three-story car and was able to go down the hill at 400 miles per hour. He was disqualified and they put the transmission here on display as a constant reminder not to cheat. Because cheaters never win. The reason that the city is named Columbus is that the Atlantic Ocean used to come up right to the edge of town. And uh, when Columbus originally went on his voyage with the Nina, Pinta, and Santa Maria, They landed in present-day Reynoldsburg. This display commemorates Columbus's oceanic, oceanic past with a variety of fish. These benches and these gazebos are replicas of the originals from the late 1880s when the residents used to sit up here on swings porch style swings and they would shoot at people traveling down the river on canoes from up here you can see the river and you can imagine what it was like for these families on canoes trying to get out of town so why were they trying to escape why were they getting out of town on canoes so fast well they either owed taxes and couldn't pay them so they had to skedaddle they had to skedaddle or more often more commonly it was discovered that they were University of Michigan Wolverine fans and the police told them they had to get out as soon as possible so the whole family would jump into canoes and they'd head north back toward Michigan and people would sit in those swings on the bluff and uh, shoot at them with shotguns filled with buckeyes. The water is not active right now, but this plaza is a giant fountain. And normally during the day, water shoots from these tubes and then up out of the ground from this section here and they let you know usually kids walk through the water and stuff and but in the old days 1910 1915 this was a public bath building here is where Ohio State University stores all their football and band equipment. Because football and band are the two biggest majors at the university, over the years the thousands of students that are on the football team and the tens of thousands that are in the band ran out of room on campus to store their equipment and their instruments. So the left side and the rotunda is full of football gear and the right hand side is full of trumpets, bugles, drums, and other marching band equipment. Right here is the second above ground indoor bowling alley that's, that the city established two years after the original. So we're 
Leaving downtown and coming into the short north, I said earlier I would explain why it's called the short north. If you remember the building I pointed at that houses all of the Ohio State University football and band equipment, You're probably wondering, well, how did they get it from downtown down there all the way up to the university up there? All of the equipment was carried up this street by Shetland ponies. And they really didn't have any, they really weren't even called Shetlands then, so they just called them short ponies. They used to say, take the short ponies north, and hence they shortened the name later to Short North. This is a statue of uh, Christopher Columbus right here. And uh, a lot of people comment that he's pretty muscular. And when they left Spain to come to America, and remember the oceans used to come up to around Reynoldsburg, just east of town, but there were sandbars in what is now present day Pennsylvania and Manhattan. So when one of the ships would get stuck, would get out and drag it until they hit deeper waters so that they could begin sailing again. Folks, those were some wild fun facts I learned about Columbus, Ohio. I hope you enjoyed that. Until next time, I'll see you then.